So, I am here today with a person, his name is Michael Butts. Uh, you want to say hi? Yeah, hi. That's uh, Michael Butt, actually. There's only one of me. Yeah. But, uh, so what do you do exactly? Do you want to tell the audience? Yeah, I own a motion picture company called More On Productions. That's M-O-R-E dash O-N. And uh, we create low-budget horrors and sci-fis. And we're kind of bridging into comedies, but we're keeping a lot of that, that uh, just, a, just a tinge of horror and sci-fi stuck in there, at least with our last one, Art Film, which is about AI uh, taking over a writer's uh, job and computer and everything and and trying to become him. So uh, that actually just had the premiere last night, so I'm a little tired, but uh, that went really, really well and uh, had, a, had a lot of people really liked it. I actually saw a guy sneak in to the theater uh, after... after uh, I, I don't think he paid, but he, he he snuck in like late and sat down. I wasn't going to question it because what if he did pay? But but uh, it was kind of interesting to see him do that. But uh, yeah, and I met, I met the guy afterwards, and he he really liked it. And it was like I didn't want to question him, but it was just really really nice to to have people give an independent work a chance in an actual theater for a while and. Uh, going to be going out to uh, the Timbers in Siren, Wisconsin. They're going to host it, and I'm trying to get it in Eau Claire right now. I've been talking to him for a while, and uh, we'll see where else it goes after that. But I'm really excited to be on your show, and I can't wait to, to hopefully uh, gain a couple more people's trust and have them give us a try. Uh, the Man with the Golden Hand is, and Cosmic Blast are on Scareplex. And you can get This Woods is Cursed on either YouTube or uh, Tubi. And then I have uh, uh, Vampire Ticks from Outer Space and Yetis. Those are two different ones. And they are on uh, Last I Checked. They're still on Amazon and Scareplex, but I think they might be on Tubi soon. I'm trying to get them all on Tubi, but it's kind of slow going. Huh. Um, so yeah, I have all your movies uh, right on my lap at the moment, actually, and I was going to talk about them. Uh, so I basically got all your movies, I'm pretty sure. Uh, I got these, uh, this book is Cursed, I got Vampire Ticks, uh, Yetis, uh, Wisconsin Unexplained, uh, That's a TV series, actually, but yeah. Yeah, uh, Cosmic Blast, uh, these, this word, uh, sorry. <laughs> this woods is cursed, yeah. Yeah, and the man, and with the golden hand. You said Cosmic Blast earlier, right? Yes. Okay, I just want to make sure you had that one. You don't have art film yet, but that one literally was just released, and I I, I printed out uh, <coughs> excuse me like fifty really uh, quick DVDs. So unfortunately, all of the uh, all of the scene selections they all say title, 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 title under all the the little uh, pictures, but. Uh, yeah, so I have 50 Gen 1 cheap DVDs that I got to pawn off on people, so I'll make sure you get one of those sometime. Yeah, uh, so I would like to talk about the Wisconsin Unexplained first, a little more in depth, if that's fine. Oh, of course. Uh, so what was your, like, angle at that? My angle? Like, what made me want to do it? Or? Yeah, like, what made you want to do it? Uh, what inspired you to do it and all that? Well, okay, so I live in a place called Elmwood, Wisconsin, and we see so many UFOs that we don't even, like, report them or anything anymore because it's, it's just, 
it's just a fact of life up here, okay? I know that sounds funny, but that's it. Just it just is. Come up here and look up at the sky at night, and you'll probably see one too. Anyway, so I've always been fascinated with UFOs, and I wanted to do a documentary on that. And I also really liked the old 1970s, 80s, I'm not sure which one it is, I think it's 70s, show called In Search Of with Leonard Nimoy. You know that one? Yeah, I did hear about that. Yeah, I really liked that show, so I wanted to make something that was like that show because, but about all the local legends and stuff here in Wisconsin. So my first episode was uh, UFOs, and then I think my second and third episode were both on ghosts and the devil's punch bowl which has gnomes in it and other strange occurrences and I have one unreleased one that I never edited and I never ever will about Ed Gein but everyone at the town was just so against me filming that I said well I'm, I'm just going to not edit this one because it just doesn't feel respectful yeah so you gotta be careful of that. I I live like forty minutes away from Plainfield, so I understand what you mean by that. Um, so with the Wisconsin unexplained, you were good. You were Dick Ball doing more episodes besides those two, or like? Oh, I I have a whole bunch of them. You, you, I guess you haven't seen it yet. I've got six of them that are completed. I had the seventh, of course. Um, and I, I had the very beginnings of another one, but I wasn't able to find enough content on the when to go to actually make a, uh, a whole episode on that. So I never finished that one. And ever since then, I've been having a hard time finding anyone who wants to talk about the stuff in Wisconsin that has any knowledge at all about it. Like, People will tell me stories about things that happened, but then I'm like, okay, when can I interview you? And they're like, oh, I don't want to be interviewed. It's like, well, that's kind of important that, like, all of the ones that I have done, except for Mabel Tainter, I've literally walked, ran into these people in person and would talk to them and then said, hey, I'd really like to put this in my show, can I? And they'd say, sure. And so then I'd come back and I'd film them. And they would be really comfortable with it and stuff like that. But when I when I do it over a telephone or, or over messenger or whatever, they always clam up. And they're always like, oh, I don't want to be on camera. So if I, if, if I can't find anyone willing to be on camera, I can't. Because I'm not just going to stand out there and say, yes, this is what happened here, and this is what happened there. That's not what Wisconsin Unexplained is about. You know what I mean? Yeah. Now, I actually been to some of these places that you have mentioned. Uh, I don't know if you want to talk about that or... Sure, yeah. The... So, yeah. I'll, I'm going to list them out if that's fine first. Yeah, that sounds great. Uh, so, I have be actually been to Devil's Punch Bowl. We, our team has done an investigation. It's like one of our first videos. We might have to remake that video. Because at the time, I had a really cheap camera. And it wasn't that great at all. Um, so, that's like one of the places I've been to. I've been to a lot of the stuff that you mentioned before with Plainfield. Because it's only, not that far away from me uh i've been to that marbell fear in menominee when i was like a kid but we took like a tour there and oh the mabel tainter yeah i i cannot say it i'm sorry if i pr well, mispronounce well, well, it short, okay don't don't think of her as ma bella as like an old lady it's no it's mabel it was a young lady who died oh okay that's, that's a way to, to do that. Okay. Yeah, the, I, the coolest thing about that is actually the, the old stuff. They still have light bulbs that work from the 1800s because they were uh, put in before built and obsolescence was a thing, and all of the uh, light bulb companies 
decided they wanted to uh, sign a treaty with each other so that they couldn't make a light bulb that would last more than a thousand hours. And I, I'm not joking. That is literally a thing that that happened in I think it was the 20s. So they still have light bulbs there that have been working for over a century. And that's just amazing. Yeah, it's amazing with those old light bulbs, how long they last. Actually, uh, the thing with uh, that beer is that we actually got, uh, I actually reached out to them because I would like to do an investigation in the future over there. And they said, yeah, sure. Um, so I might be doing that in the future. Um, have you done anything on Summerwind yet or no? No, I'd I'd love to uh, I'd I'd love to 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 do that. And if you want me to tag along and make an episode of Wisconsin Unexplained while you guys finish up what you guys are doing, I think that'd be great. We've been there like once, but I heard that the owner is gonna be like uh might pass away here soon or something like that not pass away but their uh health is health is really uh poor or whatever yeah so they they're not really it might be up for sale next few years or so or next year that's why i got hurt anyway um, I don't know if you ever heard of Box Valley Ghost Hunters, but they're like the only team that's allowed to be uh, be out there pretty much because of insurance or whatever. So, yeah. because I don't, if you ever been there, I could see why they say that because you could like fall into the into the foundation, which is like a like five or six feet tall. And then you could seriously injure yourself there, so. But we kind of did, like, a documentary type of thing for that ourselves, but it's not like what you done with your stuff. I just talked to uh, Craig from Fox Valley, and he told us the whole entire story, and that was basically it with a bunch of backdrops of her cinematic footage of the mansion itself and old pictures. Yeah, that uh, sounds pretty cool. I'll have to check that out. I'll have to send you a link for the video. Uh, but anyway, I'm sorry if I'm getting a little sidetracked. So, one my favorite movies that you have made, in my opinion, Anyway, is between Vampire Ticks and Yetis. Do you like that double feature that I released, huh? Yeah, that, that's my favorite of all the stuff you did. Well, thank you. Uh, yeah, I, I, I actually really... That, that's what got me started was I wanted to make more movies that were like that, but then I just ended up making... Uh, Anything that I was inspired by, well, okay, so uh, they came out with that new Evil Dead movie, and I didn't see it at the time, but I was like, ah, oh, they're going to ruin the Evil Dead. I like the original Evil Dead, so I made This Woods is Cursed uh, with everything I knew that they weren't going to put in to the new Evil Dead. And then after I released that, I actually decided found a copy of the new Evil Dead, and I had to watch it, and it wasn't that bad. But, uh, yeah, I was right. They didn't put in any of the... Uh, the neat stuff that I really like from the original Evil Dead, so I'm really glad that I was able to make this uh, Woods is Cursed. So, um, have you done an episode of Wisconsin Unexplained with uh, Mary from Elk Lake Dam? I have not. Uh, do you know about that at all, or not much knowledge? No, no but if you got people who'd be interested in in talking about it, I'd love to interview him. I, I just know the story about it. Is that uh, there was this girl from uh, that's named Mary, and she uh, was hitchhiking from Minneapolis to Milwaukee, and on the way to Milwaukee over by Elk Lake, 
Lake, which is, or not Elk Lake, but Elk Lake Dam, uh, which is over kind of by Eau Claire a little bit, out in the middle of nowhere, kind of. Uh, basically, she ended up getting murdered out there. And it's a pretty fascinating story. They, you could probably look it up. Anyway, they say that it's haunted by her nowadays, so. I'd like to, I'd, yeah, I'd, I'd definitely like to do an episode on that. Yeah, did, I, I have a lot of knowledge with this stuff, so if you ever need help with this stuff, then just let me know. Well, I, 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 I welcome any help I can get and any leads to people who can tell me things. I know I've had a lot of people request the Beast of Bray Road. Yeah, that's going to be a little <laughs> difficult. <laughs> we, yeah. um... We we were gonna do that for a Halloween special, but we ended up not doing that this year. It kind of fell short, so we ended up doing something else. Um, but yeah, Beast of Bray Road would probably be a really good one to do. Um, so I do, like what I said before, I do like paranormal investigations and stuff. So we will probably be talking about more of that kind of stuff than anything else for today if that's fine uh but i do want to know how uh a little bit more the, about the comedy movie they recently came out with you told me about a little bit about it uh can you tell more about it or yeah so i told you that it was about uh ai taking over a writer's keyboard and making him a new script and a about how machines are cutting humans out of the creative process now and uh, uh, how they're to control uh, you know, the, the, uh, the creativity and uh, voice and what we see and hear through these machines, right? Yeah. Well, I, 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 that's the main message of the motion picture along with uh, it, it's got a lot of humorous elements about the way we see culture or the way I'm, I'm seeing our current culture in the United States because thanks to YouTube and stuff like that, I've seen a lot of a, a huge change in my lifetime, just a huge change. And I, uh, I want to kind of document and parody what I see now compared to what I used to see. And, uh, and so what I, I did was I, I thought I watched a lot of AI-generated videos, and I said, okay, what do these have in common that old-fashioned videos don't? And then I put those kind of mistakes and elements into my motion picture to give it that a false... AI generated feeling to them, which really uh, came out pretty darn well. And uh, the theater actually sold, I believe it sold more tickets than any other uh, movie at the time. I know it was, uh, you know, Mar the Marvels and uh, the Disney Wishes and all those. So. So I don't think it did too bad. Yeah, it sounded like you did pretty good with that. So, what's, can you say all the places you've been to for Wisconsin and explain for the our episodes that you've done? For Wisconsin and explain? Yes. Yeah, yeah. I, went, I went to Mount Watson in Eau Claire. I went to the Devil's Punch Bowl. I went to Mabel Tainter. I did the Loch Ness, or not, not the Loch Ness, the uh, Lake Heaven Monster. And, of course, I did the Elm, UFOs of Elmwood. And I feel like I'm missing one, but I can't find it, so I must not be. So, you basically did kind of like the western part of the state? 
Yeah, just everywhere around me where I could get because I can't uh, really travel a lot that much because I, you know, I was still working a day job at that time. Now I'm trying to go 100% uh, into the filmmaking, so I might be able to travel, but then again, expenses are tight because I'm 100% filmmaking, so we'll see how it goes. And I need I need to verify absolutely sure line up enough content to make uh, an entire episode for me to venture too far out. Yeah. Um, so what kind of camera uh, do you shoot on let, just to let the audience know? Well, it's a Panasonic HC something from Pakistan. Okay. I don't know much about... It's, just, it's huge, right? Yeah. It's... it's it's, it's actually a really good quality camera, but it weighs like 15 pounds. That's an exaggeration, but you get the idea. I don't know, maybe it isn't even, I, I think it might even weigh 15 pounds. But uh, it's super heavy, it's super huge, and, but it's got it where it counts. A big, big microphone, which is really important. A big, big lens, which is really important. So, um, are you planning on, like, upgrading your equipment throughout the years? Like, I, I was just... I just got a new editing computer, actually. Oh, okay. I so... was, yeah, I was just wondering if you're planning on to, planning on, like, upgrading cameras eventually and all that. Oh, this one is actually doing really, really well. I mean, if I were to get any better than this one, I would have to spend not not just tons on the computer, but tons on editing programs and and stuff to to harness that power because it's so hard to edit in like 4K and stuff like that, right? And this one is pretty much top of the line I can get in regular HD, which is all that I can really afford to uh, process at this time because 4K is just immensely huge files and if you try to edit that you need a special computer to, to handle an hour and a half long movie because the one I had before now would actually struggle with HD for an hour and a half trying to trying to render something like that because it would just you know it would word and get all hot would go for an hour or, you know for a couple hours just to render that so okay I was just wondering that's all I shoot on a Sony AX53 I don't know if you know what that is or not is that a DSLR uh, it's a regular camcorder it has night vision and all that uh, it's a newer camera. It's like came out like 2017, I believe. I can't tell you on top of my head, but that's why I shoot on. It's a pretty good camera for what I use it for. It has built in surround sound and all that, so. That is good. Sound is really important. Yes, it is. My last camera that I had was some Chinese-made $100 camera, and all you heard in the background was cracking noises and all that. So, that's how I started out with, so. <laughs> uh, you gotta start somewhere. Yeah. Uh, is there anything else you want to talk about, or not really? Well, just, uh, I'd like to ask everybody to, to give my films a try, and maybe if you got a mom pop shop uh, theater in your your hometown, go ahead and uh, give them a message and tell them you'd like to see my movies in their movie hall. Uh, and where are your movies found on again?
Wait, what? <laughs> I'm sorry. The, the, the telephone cut out at the wrong time. I didn't understand what you just said. Oh, uh, can you, uh, tell everybody what your, where to find these movies again? It cut out again. And then it said, can you tell everybody what you, and then it cut out. Uh, the movies, where to find them. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, uh, you can find this, what's this cursed on Tubi? And, uh, a lot of them you can find on various horror host shows on Netflix. But if you don't want the horror hosts, you can get them on Scareplex, which they need your help right now because they're trying to, uh, run with the big boys and it's really quite expensive, so they're... They, uh, last time I heard, I think they're running, it's only like $2 a month, and it's going, you know, to to a good cause, so Scareplex is definitely the one that I like to push, All right? And you can find them all on there, and uh, besides that, there's Amazon Prime, but you got to pay for them, and of course, you know, you can always buy a DVD, so. Okay. Uh, so thank you for coming on to the podcast. Um, so make sure to check all that out on Scareplex, Tubi, uh, Prime Video, you said? Yep, Tubi, Prime Video, and Scareplex. Yeah. Scareplex is the big one. Got a question. Uh, do you want anything else, or no? Uh, well, I really want to thank you for letting me be on your show, and... It uh, was really nice to, to to talk with you and share my work with the audience. All and right. If you, and if anyone out there uh, wants to get a copy of the DVD or wants to write me, you can do so. Just go to www.more-onproductions.weebly.com. And I'll put a link down in the description for that too so um but yeah i hope everybody has a good day and i'll talk to everybody next episode of the podcast